name is Denise and I'm going to be talking to you today about the billion dollar solution or why we should be investing in advocacy for adolescent girls. So how many adolescent girls do you think there are in the world today at this minute? Any ideas? A billion. Two billion. No, actually just a bit less. 750 million adolescent girls in the world today. So this is a huge population that has tremendous needs and at the same time presents a tremendous opportunity. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about both and then a strategy that we've been implementing to help fuel change in that direction. So to give you a couple ideas, a quarter of all adolescent girls live in extreme poverty. So that means they live on less than $2 a day. More than half of all out of school young people are adolescent girls. And this is the one that drives me crazy particularly of all of the HIV positive young people in Africa today, 75% are female. So that gives you a sense that, you know, if things were equal, socially, economically, et cetera, it would be about 50-50. But because of all the tremendous marginalization that adolescent girls suffer, there's this huge imbalance in HIV prevalence rates in Africa. And at the same time, despite these tremendous challenges that we see around the world, only two cents out of every one dollar in international development funding goes towards adolescent girls. So the needs are huge, and at the same time, the opportunities are tremendous. So a lot of research has shown that adolescent girls who receive seven years of education will actually marry four years later and have 2.2 fewer children. So that just gives you a sense of you know, how this, how investing in adolescent girls not only can change girls' lives, but their families' lives, that of their children, that of their communities, and that of their countries. We know that adolescent girls spend 90% of their income on their families. Adolescent girls who obviously then go on to become women, as opposed to 35% of boys going on to become men. So investing in girls, like I've said, not only affects girls and their families, but also has a generational impact and a tremendous return on investment for efforts that are trying to promote economic development in countries around the world. So within that context of both needs and opportunities, we've developed this new strategy that's called the Adolescent Girls Advocacy and Leadership Initiative. And what we really do is work on strengthening civil society capacity to advocate effectively for policies, programs, and funding that benefit girls around the world, all focused on education, livelihoods, health, and human rights and really looking at ways to empower young women to become advocates for themselves, in addition to strengthen the ability of you know, older women, men, all sorts of leaders in different communities around the world who can also advocate for girls. So our fellows, to give you a sense, are very diverse. We have folks who work in policy, who do direct service provision, but then we also bring in people who are journalists, policymakers. Um, if you see here, there's a young woman on the left who is actually an Ethiopian rock star, literally. Mm -hmm. She is known throughout Africa as one of the kind of top pop stars. She's kind of like the J-Lo in Sub-Saharan Africa right now. And she is really committed to girls' issues and has sung a lot about girls' experiences and what her experience was like growing up. So she had, she's not by any means our typical participant, but just to give you a sense of kind of the diversity of people that we bring in who are working to create social change in all different forms. So we have a few key strategies that I'll talk through now. So what we do is we start out with really intensive capacity building. So we bring in people from all these different sectors because we really believe that they have as much to learn from each other as they do from the process or the program. So we bring in all these different people who come together in country teams and do a really intensive hands-on training process that lasts usually about a full week where they do SWOT analyses, political mapping, look at the situation of the laws and policies as they exist in their countries and then what they need to be. And then they think about you know, not just kind of what those needs are, but what the opportunities are. So what are the strengths of their own background as a, an individual leader or of their organization? And then try to marry those two things together. So we can see both kind of, these are the tremendous needs facing girls. These are the strengths that I have as an individual leader and of my organization and how I can bring that together in a strategy to do advocacy for girls. So during the course of the training, they, the first part is really focused on sort of what are these different pieces, and then we focus on developing the strategy. So all of the fellows leave the intensive workshop with an actual advocacy strategy in hand, and then they submit those to us to request funding. So we competitively award funding and small grants to the most effective and most promising of those strategies. 
We also provide technical assistance to the fellows who receive these funds. Because what we find is often that the, our fellows come in and are tremendous leaders and have great capacity for change, but that advocacy is not an easy process by any means. And so they run into all kinds of obstacles. Even if they're doing everything perfectly, the political system and the political parties change. And so, you know, it's always with advocacy, three steps forward, hopefully two steps back as opposed to four. Um, so we do a lot of TA to support their work. We also do institutional strengthening because what we've really seen is that supporting individuals is key, but also helping to build a grassroots network of organizations that are working collaboratively and effectively is really crucial. So we really focus on a whole range of issues that the fellows themselves identify as needs for their organizations. We support their dissemination and outreach because what we've seen is that these fellows are already experts in their field coming into the program. And by the time they graduate, they really are the experts in their countries. And so rather than having the knowledge end with them, we provide them with funding and support to go out and do trainings for other organizations and groups of adolescent girls so that girls themselves can understand the power that they have and learn to use their own voices for their own needs. We also have a piece that's called field building, where what we've seen is that often there's a very limited knowledge about policies, needs, and existing policies, even among policy makers. So one of the things that we've done is develop policy briefs on crucial issues affecting girls in the countries that we work in. So it all kind of comes together in this cohesive whole where we really see that our fellows have been very effective at actually creating change for girls. So I'll talk a little bit about how some of those things have happened. So, you know, one of the key pieces that we've seen is that we have this network of global leaders who are actually working together, both within their countries and then across countries, supporting one another's efforts and learning from both each other's successes and challenges. They've reached over 10,000 girls with direct service, advocacy, training, and empowerment programs. We have major legal and policy wins, which actually was a surprise to me, to be honest, because advocacy is such a huge challenge that, especially with small seed grants, you know, it was sort of, we never quite knew what was going to happen when it started. And so to be able to see the real richness and the real success that they've had has been really, really exciting. And then some of the countries that we've worked in, our fellows have come together and said, you know, we're so excited about this and we want to create our own network of organizations advocating for girls' issues. So they've come together and had a lot of success working on specific issues in a collaborative way. So just a couple of quick results. Um, in Latin America, we've seen two new policies focused on teen pregnancy prevention and services for girls as well as the creation and implementation of a new sexual violence protocol. So in Guatemala, girls were considered the same as women in terms of their needs when they had been victims of sexual violence, which we know it's very different to be a 13-year-old girl who's been raped by your father than it is to be an older woman who's been assaulted. Both are horrible situations by all means, but the needs are very different. And so being able to provide specialized attention to adolescent girls was key. We also, um, one of the main focuses has been increases in funding for programs for girls. So indigenous girls, actually it's really neat to see, there's one organization we funded, brings in indigenous girls, trains them on how to advocate for themselves, and then the girls themselves do advocacy. So this group of indigenous girls actually managed to get increased budgets for municipal level health and education programs for themselves. So it's amazing if you can envision you know, a 12-year-old adolescent girl in the Mayan highlands of Guatemala who doesn't even speak Spanish as a first language, learning how to be empowered, have the strength, have the courage to be able to speak up for her own needs is pretty inspiring. Uh, in Africa, we've had some really great results too, one of which was particularly shocking, where in Liberia there's a national children's law, and this law had been introduced several years ago got stuck there, people got, you know, sort of lost motivation around it. So folks were trying to really push it through the process and two of our fellows in their strategies j applied jointly and received funding and were actually able to get this law passed and have now received additional funding to get it implemented. So this is this law focused on comprehensive protections for girls in terms of education, health services, and violence prevention. So it's a major, major win. And if you see in that picture, that's actually one of the girls um, in their organization is presenting something to Ellen Sirleaf, who's the president of Liberia, after this law was passed. So it was a huge, huge deal. We've also seen really neat strategies of folks who are doing advocacy with tribal leaders. So one of the things that we often see with advocacy in the countries that we work in is that laws are one thing and implementation and reality is another. So even in countries that have the best laws, 
they don't necessarily matter. And so working with tribal leaders who are the people that actually dictate how people's lives are going to be on a day-to-day -day basis is crucial at the community level. And we've seen some great successes there. Like I mentioned, some budgetary advocacy work as well as campaigns focused on early marriage and HIV AIDS policy. So I would love to spend a whole lot more time telling you more about this work, but I'm unfortunately out of time right now. So uh, thank you very much. If you have any interest, you can check out our website.